the movie opens with a woman narrating talking about three types of love. The first is the one from fairy tales, impossible to achieve. The second is the boring one from real life, which leaves your heart broken and sad. The third is the one she had with the love of her life. The woman's name is Su Yu. She's a lawyer from a small firm who leads a simple life of working and going out with her friends when she can. She was married to Gao, her co-worker, but their marriage didn't work out and they got a divorce. Yu is a beautiful woman with a dainty figure, but a ferocious personality. As a lawyer, she's always questioning everything around her and she is fierce in her beliefs. Yu is in an airplane, traveling back to her hometown after a business trip when she starts crying loudly. The man sitting next to her sympathizes with her and offers her a box of tissues to dry her tears. Yu is so sad and depressed about her divorce that she doesn't even look at the man. If she had, she would have seen a dashing man in his 30s, wearing a smart suit and a worried expression. His name is Lin Kazheng, he's the CEO of one of the most important companies in China, and the heir to a very rich and traditional family. When Lin sees the woman next to him crying, he finds it fascinating because he has never seen someone crying openly like that without being embarrassed about it. When their flight lands and they are leaving the airport, the crying woman is walking in front of him. She isn't crying anymore, quite the opposite. She's laughing out loud about something she heard on her phone, and when a little girl approaches to sell her flowers, she buys them without hesitation. Lin has no clue what it is about the woman that enchants him so much. She's a beautiful conundrum, and for a rational man like him, it's confusing. As he leaves the airport with his private driver, he can't stop staring at her. After bursting into tears about her marriage for the last time, Yu is in a good mood. She goes to the apartment she shares with her sister, Yu, but finds it a mess. There are plates broken everywhere, and no sign of her sister. When a worried Yu opens the bathroom, she finds her sister passed out from blood loss. She tried to take because of a love delusion. Yu rushes to the hospital and finds out her sister has been messaging a man she works with. Yu makes it her mission to find out who this man is and what his relationship with her sister is. Yu has severe depression and the smallest things can trigger her. Yu doesn't need her sister to have another episode and goes after the man. She finds out he is Lin Kijang, the president of the company her sister works at. She immediately goes after him there, invading his office without a care in the world. Lin instantly recognizes her. He's been obsessing over her ever since they traveled together, and now she was there, right in front of him. As for you, she has no idea who he is. She confronts him and he explains that he never had any kind of relationship with you. She sends him messages but he's not used to reading any that he receives. Right away you notices she has made a mistake, that her sister is delusional and the man is not to blame for her situation. She apologizes and says that her sister won't come back to work at the company. Before she leaves, Lin informs her that her sister can't leave because of a contract with the company. Yu gets angry and promises to find out a way to get her sister out of that situation. Then, she leaves the room as quickly as she entered, without a backward glance at the handsome and rich man staring at her. Yu is a no-nonsense kind of woman, and what she wants, she gets. She has to think of ways of helping her sister, but Yu is completely obsessed with Lin and thinks they can have some kind of relationship. It worries you that her sister is acting like that. She's afraid that she's going to try something again if she doesn't get what she wants. Still, she's determined to get her sister fired so that she can't see Lin again. A few days go by since she stormed into his office, and Yu hasn't found a solution to her sister's contract yet. Her friend tells her there's no way for Yu to leave the company without paying good money for it. To make things worse for her, she finds out one of her clients is threatening to throw himself from a building if he doesn't receive compensation for a job he did for Lin's company. Yu has no idea how she can calm the guy and make him come down. Luckily for her, Lin comes to the rescue with a bag full of money to convince the man. Together they go up to the building and Yu almost passes out. She's terrified of heights, and they are far from the ground. Lin notices her suffering and helps her as much as he can. As they are trying to convince the man not to jump, Lin has flashbacks of when he was a kid and his mother in front of him. The situation is triggering for him, but he still tries to do his best to help out. He doesn't want the guy to jump. Yu almost falls from the building, but Lin holds her close to him to protect her. Eventually, they convince the guy to not jump and things work out. Yu is surprised by Lin and glad that he helped her, even though he had no obligations to her. It's difficult to see a rich man like him worry about the working class and what happened to them. She's so enchanted that she invites him for dinner with her. They go to a popular restaurant that is filled with people. Lin has never been in a place like that and he tries to look more comfortable. If it wasn't for his interest in Yu, he would have never been caught in that situation. It's a nice dinner. Yu thanks him for his help and asks again for him to let her sister go because she's obsessed with him. It's not healthy for her to be in the same place he is every day. Her obsession will only get worse. Lin agrees to change her departments, so she isn't in direct contact with him. It's not what she asked for, but it's better than nothing. After drinking some alcohol, Yu confesses to Lin that she had no idea he would be like that. When he's confused, she explains that he's a good listener. She has been talking a lot and he listens to everything she has to say with his full attention. It's refreshing for her. Lin listens more than he talks, but as he gets to know her a little bit better, he finds out that he likes her a lot. 
She's an open and honest woman. She isn't afraid of speaking her mind and she goes after what she wants. It's incredible for him to have met a woman like her. When dinner is over, he offers to take her home, but she denies it because her house isn't far. She has no idea that he's trying to spend more time with her. It starts raining and Lin grabs an umbrella to go after you. He shares the umbrella with her, surprising her, and takes her home. Meanwhile, Yu's sister is obsessively reading an article about Lin and Yu. She's jealous that her sister got to spend time with Lin, disregarding the situation they were in completely. The following day, a beautiful and modelesque woman arrives in China. Her name is Jiang Xinyao, she's the heiress of a company as big as Lin's. A long time back, Lin had tutored her to go to stay overseas, and ever since then, she has had a massive crush on him. She thinks that now she is an adult, Lin will finally propose to her and they are going to get married. Lin sees her like a little sister and has zero attraction to her. His mind's on you most of the time, and he's looking forward to seeing her again. Back to you, she has no idea there are pictures of her with Lin all over the internet. People are even shipping them as a couple, something that is completely absurd in her mind. At no point, she gave any indication that she was romantically interested in him. She admired his tenacity and the way he quickly found a solution to her client's issue. But the last thing you wanted in her life is another relationship. She moved on from her ex already, and she has no issues with him. Things just weren't working out anymore. Still, the divorce made you insecure about herself and her love life. She prefers to focus on her career and take care of her sister. Besides, Lin is a rich man from a respectable family. There is no way that he was going to fall for a poor lawyer with no family connections. She denies to her curious co-workers that she has a relationship with Lin, but her boss finds out that she knows him and wants to exploit it. He begs her to call Lin and ask for an interview for their firm. Lin's company lost its former law firm and they are searching for a new one. He and Lin's ex pester her until she gives up and calls Lin. Surprisingly, he agrees to give her an interview. Lin wants to see her again, and interviewing her firm is the perfect opportunity. He oversees their presentation himself. Yu has to be the one to do the presentation and she's completely honest about her firm. Lin respects her honesty and openness. With Yu, he gets what he sees, and there's no mask for her. Her firm gets the job and they go out to celebrate their victory. Yu drinks a bit, but not much. When she's going home, Lin's chauffeur is waiting for her. Lin has invited her to have dinner with him, and though she has no idea why, she goes. She finds Lin in a bar, eating his dinner by himself. It's a bit depressing seeing a successful man so lonely when she had just been with her friends. She indulges for a moment, listening to him until he starts talking about marriage to her. He wants to offer her a marriage proposal. He finds her interesting and refreshing, and he would like to pursue a relationship with her. He boldly confesses his feelings to a stunned Yu. The last thing she expected from him was a marriage proposal. After all, she has no idea what he sees in her. She is a good lawyer and pretty, but he comes from a whole different world. She stays with her sister in a small apartment in a middle-class neighborhood, and he resides in a penthouse overlooking the city. They are like oil and water, and Yu thinks they are never going to blend. She denies his proposal and asks him to not ask her that again because they are working together. She leaves him there, shocked that she refused him when no other woman in her position would. Their difference is not the only thing that makes you leave him behind. She's afraid that what he feels for her is an infatuation, and soon he is going to get sick of her. Then, she would be left behind, crying over a man again. She had promised herself to never be a hostage of love, and she's determined to hold on to her promise. At home, her sister tells her that she got a promotion out of the blue. She isn't happy about it, because she changed departments and won't be able to obsessively stare at Lin the whole day. Yu pretends that she knows nothing about it, but inside she's thankful to Lin. He had no obligation to fulfill her request, yet he did. It's another positive point for him in her mind. Her sister asks her about the pictures that were taken of them, and Yu explains the situation. Yu isn't happy that her sister is going to spend more time with Lin now that she's his lawyer. There's nothing to it, though, at least not from Yu's side. The following day, Yu brings her sister on a blind date. Yu ignores the man the whole date, pretending he isn't even there. Later on that same day, Lin invites Yu for dinner again, and she accepts it. She's grateful to him and they work together, so she doesn't want there to be any hard feelings. A driver takes her to his mansion, and there they have a lavish dinner. Things are going well until Lin steers the conversation toward private matters again. He finally tells her that he was the man sitting next to her on the airplane when she was crying her eyes out. He remembers him as the tissue guy. She had no idea that it was him there, something that confirms to Lin that she doesn't care about his money or status. He wonders why she was crying so hard, and she explains that her divorce had just been finalized. To make things worse, she was late for the flight and had to buy a first-class ticket, spending more money than she could. In turn, Lin confesses to not having many friends since he has lived overseas most of his life. He's a lonely man, and he's infatuated with her. Once more, he asks her to marry him. After getting to know him a little better, Yu is a bit shaken. She's still afraid of commitment and of giving her heart to someone else only to have it broken again. Not to mention the fact that her sister is obsessed with him and has delusions that they are going to get married one day. It's hard to say no to him again, especially after he touches her so closely and briefly kisses her. 
The man is handsome, nice, smart, everything someone could ever want, and he wanted her. It's too much for you. She doesn't know what to do, so she runs. At home, she can't forget his lips and the way he held her. It keeps repeating in her mind, making her even more confused and infatuated with him. The following day, he keeps trying to call her. When she doesn't answer his calls, he goes to her firm. They have a confrontation in which he promises her that he's sincere in his feelings, and that he wants to get to know her better and marry her. It's absurd to you. She's upset that he brought personal feelings to her workplace, where everyone could hear them talking. She's also sure that their relationship wouldn't work out and she didn't want another failure. She politely asks him to leave, and he finally does. Lin is crushed that he found a woman worth pursuing, and she doesn't want him. Jiang Xinyao shows up at his apartment and brings him food. She's overly excited to be with him, and she's sure they are going to get married. Lin has no clue that the girl likes him, so he treats her like a little sister. A few days go by and Yu has to travel with Lin's company on a business trip. Lin doesn't try to approach her again, like asked him to, and they barely talk during the trip. It's only when Yu finds out about his life, how his mother passed away when he was young and he has been alone ever since, that she decides to approach him again. Lin is surprised when he sees her willingly coming to talk to him after her constant rejection of his feelings. As they talk, he confesses to her that he wants to be happy. His lavish life as an heir isn't fulfilling to him. He's just his father's pawn, and most of the time he feels lonely and sad. He doesn't have a close relationship with his father or older brother, and he has no friends or girlfriends. For him, Yu is the perfect example of happiness. She doesn't have much in life, but she is happy with what she has. He doesn't need fancy houses or an exclusive credit car. He could have anything material that he wanted, but he wants the only thing money can't buy. He asks her to think about his proposal, and after hearing him say that he only wants happiness, Yu isn't so sure about her answer anymore. It gets even harder when she finds out another secret from him. He goes to the same cafe every day, and it's the place that Yu passes by every day to go to work. When Lin found out about the place, he started going there only to stare at her without her knowing. That is the last straw for Yu. She can't deny herself anymore. He's the perfect man, and if she doesn't give the relationship a shot, she is going to regret it. The following morning, when she passes by the cafe and sees him, she enters it. Lin is shocked that she saw him and gets nervous about her presence. He offers her a coffee and when he leaves to get it, Yu quickly goes away. He notices it and runs after her. He calls her name in the middle of the street. He tells her that he's going away on a business trip and he wants to meet her when he comes back. Yu sweetly smiles at him and nods. That's the beginning of their relationship. They both excitedly look forward to meeting again when he comes back. Yu can't stop thinking about him, but not all reservations she had were gone. She likes him, that's a fact. She wants to be with him. But, she doesn't know the burden that comes from a serious relationship. When they meet again, Yu hugs Lin as if they hadn't seen each other for ages. It's quite different from the way she was before. They go to a hotel and as soon as they step foot in the room, they start making out and get intimate for the first time. They have great chemistry and things are looking up for them. They enjoy their time together and Yu is glad that she gave him a shot. He's everything she has dreamed of in a man. Unbeknownst to them, while they are having their reprieve to explore their new relationship, the press takes pictures of them. When they return to reality, Yu goes to Lin's place to meet him and talk to him. She wants them to have some boundaries in their relationship, things that will make her less anxious. She wants to be independent of him, to spend her life as she wants to. She also tells him that if either one of them wants to step away from the relationship, they can. Lin agrees with her, though he thinks they are unnecessary. They are getting intimate when someone knocks on his door. It's Zhang Xinyao again, bringing more food to Lin. He introduces the two women and Yu notices right away that Zhang is in love with Lin. The man is clueless, so much so that he invites Yu to eat with them. Zhang subtly wonders if they are dating, and Lin confirms it. She asks if they plan to marry, and he confirms it again, much to Yu's chagrin. Jiang is upset, but she tries not to show it. Later on, their happy bubble bursts when the pictures taken from them are leaked in the press. Lin's father isn't happy about it and complains to him about it. The bad press is even worse because they are losing money because of his older brother. Lin has to quickly travel to talk to some investors and try to get more money for the company before his father freaks out. While he's traveling and Yu is alone, she finds out her ex is going to get married again. She's happy for him, she's even going to go to the wedding, but a small part of her feels sad. She moved on from him, and now she's in a relationship that she doesn't know the future of. She had told Lin herself to not worry about the future, only the present. Still, it's hard not to think about it when her ex is getting married and her relationship is so complicated. To make things worse, one day Lin's father talks to her. He asks her to break up with his son. He needs his head in the game and Yu has nothing to offer him. She has no idea what to say or do, so she stays quiet. Still, his words put more doubts in her head, and she tends to always run. When Lin comes sometime later, she hasn't made her decision yet. They meet at the cafe and he explains to her that his family's company needs money and more investors. He needs to travel again to borrow some money, and that makes her cry. She thinks about what his father said to her and how hard Lin is working to save the company. She tries to mask her pain so he doesn't notice it. Lin's far too happy to see her to realize that she isn't crying because she was missing him. She's crying because she will miss him when she eventually lets him go. 
Days later, Yu receives a surprise visit to her work. It's Zhang Xinyao. The younger woman asks to talk to her and Yu agrees. Zhang went there to tell you that she needs to let Lin go because she has nothing to offer him. Jiang does. Her father is as rich as Lin's father, and he can help salvage their company. In exchange, Lin has to marry Jiang. She cruelly asks you to write their marriage contract, and Yu realizes there's nothing she can do. At the same time, Lin receives the news from his father and he's understandably upset. The first thing he does when he comes back is go after Yu at her place. Yu has to hide him so her sister doesn't realize she's been lying to her. Lin tries to make Yu leave with him, and he begs her, but she's stubborn and her mind is made up. What Jiang told her was true. She had nothing to offer Lin besides her love and loyalty. For a man like him, that couldn't be enough. She's afraid that if he gives up on his life for her, he's going to resent her down the line. That's worse than being separated from him. For that reason, she holds on to her decision and there's nothing Lin can do but accept it. They are miserable after that. Yu has to write the marriage contract and go to the meeting so that Jiang and Lin can sign it. It's painful for both of them, and Lin keeps trying to make her change her mind. It's too late, and he ends up signing the contract along with Jiang. Yu tries to hold her tears at bay while she also signs her name in the contract, as their lawyer. Lin also cries watching her angst. It's not fair for his father and Jiang to put her in that position. The following day, it's her ex's wedding. Yu and her sister go, but all the guests are surprised when Lin suddenly appears. He goes after Yu as she covertly leaves because she didn't want her sister to find out about them. Yu is suspicious and follows after them as they leave the wedding reception. She eavesdrops as Lin confesses his love to Yu and tells her he wants her no matter what. They go to a hotel room and Yu bursts into tears as she says that she doesn't want to be his mistress. Lin tries to comfort her and confesses he's tired of that lifestyle of only money and loneliness. His mother had taken her life away because she was miserable, and he didn't want that same fate for himself. While he's crying and trying to hold her, Yu's cell phone rings. It's her sister, and she is ready to jump from the same building Yu and Lin met for the second time. They quickly call the firemen and run after her. Yu finds her sister there, at the edge, and pleads for her to come back. Yu's mind is a mess and she hates her sister for having the man she wanted. Lin also tries to reason with her to no avail. She's too nervous and delusional, accusing Yu of lying to her. While she's yelling, she accidentally falls from the building. Lin quickly throws himself at her and grabs her arm. Yu smiles and says that she's happy that she can go holding his hand. Then, to Yu's desperation, she lets go. Thankfully, the firemen were waiting for her with the net and nothing too bad happened to her. Lin knows that after what her sister did, there was no way that Yu would go back to him. If she did, she could trigger Yu even more. As she walks into her sister's ambulance, they sadly say their goodbyes through their stairs. Days go by, and they never see each other again. Lin moves out of the city because he can't bear to be in the same place as you. As for her, she tries to move on with her life, but everywhere she looks, she's reminded of him. In the airplane, on his way to his new life, Lin remembers the first time he saw her and starts crying. At the same time, Yu is walking across a bridge that Lin helped to build and cries her eyes out remembering their time together. In the end, the third type of love is the one that comes unexpectedly, when you're least waiting for it. The type of love that comes from nowhere, but feels completely right. 